So let's look at this question, which is uh, one of the questions from topic 3.2. Um, plants store carbohydrates in the form of starch. Explain the reasons for starch being digested by the human digestive system. So they're talking about the fact that starch is a complex carbohydrate, it's a large molecule. So let's start off with that first. So starch is a complex carbohydrate or large molecule. I'll put that down in the slash like that, so it's a large molecule, okay? And what is the problem of starch? So starch, if it's a large molecule, it can't be absorbed, can it? Because it's too large to go past the phospholipobilator, it can't go through those pores. The starch cannot be absorbed. So if it cannot be absorbed, then it's not very useful either. So it's important to state these down in these paper two section B questions. It seems obvious, but then just remember to write down the obvious as well. So starch is not useful in humans. However, what is useful is when it gets converted. And what does a complex carbohydrate get converted to? It gets converted to a simple carbohydrate. In this case, the simple carbohydrate is glucose. What's the good thing about glucose? Well, glucose can be absorbed. That's the first thing. And if once glucose can be absorbed, then what does that get converted into? It usually gets converted into um, a complex carbohydrate as well, but this time it's called glycogen. And finally, what is glucose used for by itself. Well, I mean, it's obvious. Glucose is used as energy. But once again, state the obvious. Okay? So if we go back to the question, it seems like we're diverting from the question a bit. Explain the reasons for starch being digested by the human digestive system. And we've started off with starch, then we've talked about what starch gets turned into, and then we've talked about glucose. And that's the way that you have to approach these questions. You have to expand upon the what the question asks you initially. Next question. Outline the role of hydrolysis in the relationships between monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. So let's uh, underline these first, these keywords. So monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. And we can also um, outline this action word over there. So we have to give a brief summary of what the relationship is. So let's first of all define these words that are underlined in green. So monosaccharide. is a single sugar, whereas disaccharide is a double sugar. How about polysaccharide? Polysaccharide is many sugars. So that's our first basis, we've defined those words. Now we have to define this next one, so hydrolysis. What is hydrolysis? So hydrolysis is addition of water to break a molecule into smaller fragments. Okay? And the way that you can remember that, hydro means water, lysis means break. So water breaking. But it's not actually the water that gets added onto anything. It's actually the OH and the H. 
which gets added on because remember how H2O looks something like this? It's two H's bound to an O. So then what happens is that this gets added onto one and this gets bound onto another one. So the OH and the H gets added onto the smaller fragments. Good. So we've talked a bit about that. So we've defined it and we've talked a bit about the hydrolysis definition as well. Now let's talk about the relationships between these two. So if a polysaccharide was to undergo hydrolysis, it will get broken down into smaller fragments such as disaccharides. And how about disaccharides? Well, for disaccharide, if there are two sugars connected together, the only way that they can become simpler is if they become one sugars. Okay. The final thing is that any time that we talk about a process like hydrolysis or condensation reactions, any time you think of reactions, always put down enzymes. You might get an extra point in, and in this case you would. So this process is enzyme based. So we notice that this is a short question, and so we're looking for about four to five marks. This one, even though it's three lines, would only give us one. So let's give us a red tick here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we would get over 100% in this case. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out. Just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions, as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.